Overpromising and under delivering. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and today I wanted to talk to you some about Warhammer Plus. It's a very hot button issue that I think there's a lot of information and a lot of disinformation out there because that's just the way it is about the platform and about what's happening. So we have talked about it a lot and we actually put out a post yesterday called it's time to cancel warhammer plus and yeah it's a it's a it's a clickbaity title for sure but we showed so many specific examples of where it gives workshop over promised and under delivered that at the end of the day you know it's all about voting with your hobby dollars and we're trying to give you the information to do that for yourselves in actual proof, like here it is folks, here is the things that were done, here is what's good, here is what's bad, how do you feel about it? Obviously it's a value to you, keep it, if not, then don't keep it because there's some good and there's some bad about Warhammer Plus, but I'm gonna give you the summary, the conclusion of all this up front and then give you the facts and give you the, the conclusion, at least that I see. And what I see is that if Games Workshop is constantly inventing and then rewriting the narrative for this business platform, this business segment of theirs, that there's a lot of, it's a very slippery slope that they could be doing the same thing across all their business segments and all their different offerings and all their different internal and external communications with their third parties, uh, third party suppliers, third party vendors, um, supposed partner vendors with local game stores which we saw how they've been treated over the past year i've showed you a lot of that too so i think that at the end of the day it's all about voting with our hobby dollars which we have constantly told you uh, boycotts don't work which we're also going to show you sorry reddit they, they, they still haven't worked it's great for raising awareness but i think that at the end of the day it's all about voting with your hobby dollars individual opinions don't matter what i'm gonna what i'm telling you what i feel doesn't matter unless it becomes a trend y'all it has to become a trend for games workshop to notice it and be like oh wow we don't have we got a lot of unsubscribes or we're not having a lot of adopters for this product or oh crap we didn't sell a lot of this product we still got dominions for days huh maybe we shouldn't do what we did with dominion again and until those things happen games workshop isn't gonna take notice okay and that's really, in my mind, in my heart, the truth of it. So I'm gonna to try to arm you with as much information as possible to make those decisions and perhaps create those trends in this space so that we get real actual value for our hobby dollars in return. So let's get into it. So let's start out with the now and then get to the then. So here it is, it's time to cancel Warhammer Plus. This was the article that's probably going to end up being our highest trafficked article in the history of the site. This is where I explain that it's kind of hard for us to support something that Games Workshop constantly changes, uh, creates, and then rewrites the same exact narrative, sometimes in the same week. Um, so obviously from the get-go, and we're going to go back and show you this, the whole animations thing, or the whole Warhammer Plus thing, before it even became Warhammer Plus, it was animations. It was animations, animations, animations. We saw the first trailer for Angels of Death at LVO 2020. Um, we, or excuse me, the first news about it. We didn't see a trailer until later on this year, actually, I believe in April, which I'm gonna show you all the dates here in a few minutes. So it's always been about the animations. 12 new shows coming, 12 new shows. We've seen Angels of Death and we've seen Hammer and Bolter over there. Okay, cool. Even from the first preview, it wasn't even billed as Warhammer Plus. It was animations, all about the animations, which gets us into the value of Warhammer Plus. Now, this graphic was created um, roughly after they rolled out the, pre the promo of Warhammer Plus, the preview of Warhammer Plus, which was just honestly, basically, it was just the animations at first. Um, then it kind of didn't do so well. It was right after that time that Games Workshop was really getting hammered in comments on their live streams with a lot of toxic comments. It was post Curse City, 
um, there was a lot of stuff going on that, that just people weren't really happy with. And I think people were really starting to understand a lot of what was going on with Games Workshop. And that's kind of extra exterior issues to this, but we're not going to really address those in this video. But at first it was animations, then they said, hey, you're going to get a free exclusive miniature. But then, as you also might remember, when they rolled it out, um, very shortly they realized that, oh, we need to throw some vouchers with this as well. And they put a voucher to kind of sweeten the pot, to get people to sub, to get people to be day one adopters. And, you know, from a standpoint of a business person, if you have to, if you, if the value of your product isn't strong enough that you're going to have that many day one adopters, think of a Kickstarter, think of early bird specials, that if, if, it, if it doesn't stand that strong by itself, it probably isn't that strong. And that was kind of the feeling we were getting um, when it was initially revealed. So let's talk about the money here because on paper, and we said this is probably one of the five best things Games Workshop has ever done. Potentially, if they if it ended up rolling out right and everything was good with it, which we know in October of 2020, 2021, that is not the case. So the cost for a year is $59, as we'll show you here. You get a $10 voucher if you, you know, subscribed early. So, all right, cool. Spend 60 bucks, get a $10 voucher, get $35 worth of exclusive figures because, well, you know, an independent character figure these days is about $35 in GW money. Is it worth that? Well, that's a whole different video altogether. This is an expensive hobby. It's a luxury hobby. All hobbies are expensive. Yeah, single characters go for 35 bucks these days. That's just the world we live in. Um, then they just rolled out with their paint giveaway. So five winners are going to get that. Uh, they announced that October 1st. Obviously, a lot of stuff happened this week that we'll address here shortly. So at the end of the day, you spend 60 bucks, you get $45 worth of stuff. Remember the voucher, you still have to spend money because, I mean, what are you going to get for 10 bucks in GW money? Well, you're going to have to put some money with it, but it still is $10. Uh, so actual cost for a year is going to only cost $15, which breaks down to $1.25 a month for initial subscribers. Literally the best deal that ever existed in this hobby. $1.25 a month for all that content, all the animations, the army builders, whether they're in beta, whether they're not, whether they work, whether, I mean, well, obviously we want them to work, but it's $1.25 a month. What else can you get for $1.25 a month in this hobby? Literally nothing. You can't even buy a paint. So yes, on paper, this deal looks dope as fuck. 100% on board, ready to go. But that's when everything goes sideways. And I think that's where Games Workshop has their biggest problem is over promising and under delivering. So here's the big issue. So here's where it really started going off the rails, at least for me. On September 26th, Sunday, the new teaser for uh, the weekly releases, the weekly pre-orders came out. And as you can see, there was nothing listed with any animation for the Warhammer Plus's lineup. We had noticed, of course, a couple weeks earlier that they had changed the terminology in their FAQ and also in some of their posts to reflect that instead of every week there would be content, most weeks there would be content. Now, I don't know if that was a confusion on some of the author's parts on whether they need to refer to animations or whether they need to refer to the actual content being the exclusive shows. Of course, Battle Reports, the Lore Master, the Painting, and then of course the Warhammer Vault stuff, the old White Dwarfs and the even older um, inserts for box sets and, and different things like the Shield of Balls and then some of the stuff when Gilliman came back way back when in 2017. I think Shield of Ball was from 2013 or 2000. I want to say it was 2013 now that I think about it. So it's older stuff. And if you haven't seen it, it does have value. But at the end of the day, as we already showed you, everything about Warhammer Plus was marketed from the animation standpoint. So we noticed all this, put out a post and editorial about it about, hey, looks like there isn't an animation this week. That's weird. It's barely been four weeks worth of animations. We know there's 12 shows out there. And now all of a sudden we got a week without a show. We showed the silent FAQ change. Again, there might be some confusion on Games Workshop authors parts, whether you know animation or content, what is what. But yeah, it's all been in there and it's all been changed. We know that the, the app is in beta. They at least told us it was beta, it was delayed. Some of the product launches for Cruel Boys and Stormcast were delayed. It was probably delayed because of that. I get that, that's just business, that's the world we're in. There's a little bit of a delay. 
I get that. And they were upfront about it, which I appreciate for sure. But literally hours after we published this post, something magical happened. Hidden deep into a post about the Loremaster uh, content or show that was coming out that week about Gasgo Tharaka was this image here showing a new piece of content, a deep strike podcast about the four episodes or so of Angels of Death that had already come out, um, kind of like a round robin discussion about what the presenters liked about that just poof appeared out of nowhere that Wednesday hours after our editorial saying hey this is kind of effed up guys like what happened here they explained it as not only that but this was taken animations were taking a mid-season break Angels of Death was taking a mid-season break um Bolter and Chainsword or Hammer and Bolter would be back shortly but it would it wasn't even going to come back every week so we might not even have an animation every week maybe we will it's hard to say because you know we're not the source we don't know but angels of death wasn't even going to be back until november that's a four week break y'all a four week break so from the look right this is the look not even a month later they've already started throttling content maybe there's a content creation gap we don't know but no they didn't say anything about it until an editorial went up about us about it. Not only that, but they went back to that post. They went back to that teaser post on Sunday. Put this image in it. No editorial's note. No nothing. Magically appeared. Changed it. Made it look like it was there the whole time. Obviously, we have the screen cap of it. So it wasn't. And just pretended like nothing had happened. There it is. There's, there's the original, there's the current one that's up on there. Not only that, but they invented that whole mid-season break thing a day later on Thursday. So on Wednesday, they're like, hey, we got this thing. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Angels of Death is on a mid-season break that we didn't tell anybody about. It's okay, guys. It's on a mid-season break. But hey, we'll have some hammer and bolter soon. Okay, that's cool. But this thing's not coming back for weeks. But but where's the other 12 episodes? Where's the other 12 shows that we're going to see? What exactly is going on? And I think that constant over-promising and under-delivering is really what irritates a lot of people, I feel like. The value's there. It's just everything else is so hit or miss. So from there, we can see at least two specific cases where they've said one thing, gone back, changed the thing they've said from the FAQ to also the delivery of this animation content. Um, we know there was delays. They At least they told us up front this time that the Warhammer Sigmar app was going to be in beta. They didn't quite do that with 40K, you might remember. And well, even the Loremaster show was a week later than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be out September 1st and ended up coming out a week later. Don't know what's going on with that, but whatever. It, you know, again, there's a little bit of delay sometimes with things. I get that, but they definitely didn't notify anybody of that. They're just like, oh, this is coming out this week. Wait, wait wasn't that supposed to come out last week? Yeah, I guess so. And then after all of this, so went, so Sunday, post, picture, no animations, Wednesday, talking about that, hey, there's going to be a podcast thing talking about Angels of Death. Thursday, Angels of Death took a mid-season break and, oh, hey, we're going to have some Hammer and Bolter. Might not be back to back, but it's going to be here. And then on Friday, hey, there's a giveaway. Five different people will win a set of all this stuff, which is cool and super appreciate it. But it almost seems like, and this is kind of one of the huge points I want to make, is that the constant over-promising and under-delivering, and then the things they do to make up for it, maybe adding in the figure, which those figures that they offered were 3D prints painted up, and we don't even have the figures yet. They're obviously coming uh, later on down the road, I think like a year or so, they said. Um, and now this giveaway, and now all this back talk and going back and editing posts, if they just actually delivered what they promised in the beginning, I think that would go further with potential subscribers and you know and existing hobbyists than the kind of the same old overpromising, under delivering double talk that we've come to expect, or it's really become the norm from Games Workshop that's so off-putting. 
And before I recorded this video, I actually went back and I sort of brainstormed all the craziness that's happened at Games Workshop in the past, well, let's say since summer of last year, June 3rd, 2020, when 9th edition 40K finally started to officially be recognized by Games Workshop as actually happening. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I just want to show you that I went through and I summarized all the crazy stuff, all the things that happened up until now to get to kind of the point that we're, we're at where, like I said, Games Workshop is doing these things. They're over promising, they're under delivering. And in a lot of cases, they're doing things that it really doesn't look favorable on them. They're not reading the room and they're making a lot of moves that is costing them a lot in the court of public opinion, I feel like. You know, from the Dominion FOMO to some of the stuff with, uh, you know, they're updating their IP policy to kind of protect the whole Warhammer Plus thing, which I think is a huge stumbling block for a lot of people that, do, that didn't like that. And of course, a lot of content creators quit. Now, to be fair, that's on them. That's not on Games Workshop. They didn't actually go after anybody content creation wise yet, but that doesn't mean they won't down the road. However, and then of course, Reddit wanted a boycott and all sorts of things. The three to one down vote started all across their Warhammer TV on YouTube. You can check it now. It's not quite three to one. It's a lot of it's 50 50, but it's still a lot more than the few they used to get before. So there's a lot of opinion out there again individual opinion doesn't matter until it becomes a trend and that's kind of what it is over there in my opinion talking more about the warhammer plus stuff uh the walk back and then of course the big stuff that happened earlier uh before all this content rollback is the rumored nda leak that's a non-disclosure agreement which also kind of had a built-in little thing about a uh, non-compete clause that may or may not be enforceable depending on where you live definitely not in california look that one up very interesting stuff um but that in even if it isn't true it's it's definitely rumored it looked very very official um in the court of public opinion it didn't look good and it had a lot of content creators on YouTube really up in arms about it. Um, not all of them created videos about it. I actually spoke with quite a few of the top content creators. One didn't believe it was real. Two actually gave me the document. <laughs> and a lot of the, uh, the other ones in between were just kind of like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And you know, it is what it is. So, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're just still creating content out there in the vein that they are in, whether it's, you know, the super positive, super nice stuff or, you know, just kind of the more news and um, rumor related stuff that some of the other people are doing. So at the end of the day, you really just got to stay true to yourself. And that's what we try to do here on Spiky Myth. So. In conclusion, Warhammer Plus on paper, dollar for dollar, is an incredible value if you subbed early. Probably the best value will ever seen in any of our lifetimes for anything like this. Most of that value comes from a voucher and an exclusive model, both of which seemingly were revealed after the launch of the service hit opposition, um, both after the first preview and also at launch. Games Workshop continues to make up and then reinvent the narrative for Warhammer Plus, deciding, you know, basically when and where it suits them. And that's not the only place we've seen where they've gone back and they've re, I guess, invented the narrative or at least edited their post and not notified anybody about it. Do you remember the Black Templar Flamer weapon that supposedly was D2 damage? Not only did they edit the post, but they also changed the image of that weapon profile with no notification whatsoever in the post that the, the, the old versus the new. And the reason I know this is because I actually record, I have access to all the RSS feeds for this stuff. So I literally have the original versions of everybody's post always that we follow here and I can access it anytime I want. <laughs> and sometimes I don't even know it, but, but when somebody's like, hey, wait a minute, this changed. I can literally go back and see it, y'all. Like these are the things we do here just to keep track of everything because it's important to the hobby. So at least to me, this is all a dangerous precedent that could mean that Games Workshop is doing this exact same thing and other aspects of their business as well. Like I said, whether it's dealing with internal communications, external communications, third party licensees, third party retailers, distribution, you name it, they're a vertically integrated company. So the potential 
for recklessness here, as we've seen publicly posted on their literal website, is tremendous, to be quite honest. And it's, it's worrisome, it's bothersome. Because if they just flagrantly do things like this and constantly invent and change the narrative when it suits them, can you only imagine what could happen in the future? And I think for me, that's troublesome. So when I vote with my hobby dollars, I want clear value. I want to know that what I'm getting is worth that value. And I don't want to be burdened with all the bullshit behind the scenes that can I trust this company? And yeah, you can't trust every company. You can't even trust governments out there in 2021. But this is our hobby. We're supposed to feel good about it. And there's plenty of other places to spend my hobby dollars, me personally, that I feel good about the way the designers, the way the creators, and the way the company is interacting with their customers and their fans and their community. And right now it's just not Games Workshop, unfortunately. But that being said, there's plenty of other alternative miniatures, places to get things out there and other games to play while we wait it out. I'm not gonna sell my 40K models. I still play Warhammer. I still play Titanicus on occasion, but I'm just not into it as much. Now, if you wanna check out some great places to get actual value, we have an amazing list over here of our recommended products for the miniatures hobby. Stuff I've used, stuff I've tried, stuff I definitely put my money where my mouth is and I'm a lot of times purchased, but sometimes, you know, it's given to us for review. But this is everything I use that I found actually doesn't suck. If you wanna know more about 3D printing, and what you'll need for the best prints every time, we have a link right here on the sidebar on our desktop version. Airbrushes that work, airbrushing, well, a lot of people are opinion debated about that too, but in 2021, not quite as many. A lot more people airbrush than you would think. Everything you need to know about airbrushing, complete with tutorials and what to buy is here. The top 50 Games Workshop alternatives. So if you're looking for alternative miniatures to use on the tabletop for Games Workshop, this list is probably for you. A lot of great creators, a lot of great companies out there that you can definitely get behind in 2021. Um, I. I update this pretty regularly. This list is some of the best out there. Definitely check it out. Best online resources for Warhammer 40K. That's from, you know, where to get game aids, where to get things to help you in game, to keep you more engaged, to also help you with your times and the, you know, the things you're, you're doing on the tabletop outside of the game. Just so when you actually sit down to play the game, they go quicker and you're more engaged and you have a better idea of what's going on. This list is for you right here. We also have some other um, great alternative games um, that I'll probably be putting up over on the sidebar as well too. Now, this whole list here, which I've titled Games Workshop Chasing a Dollar, um, is a timeline of bad behavior going back to last summer, June of 2020, where they started their initial overpromising and under-delivering with the rollout of 9th edition 40K and the 40K app, which was just a big beta play. Um, this list right here will be coming out and I'll have the links so you can check out everything they've done up until it's time to cancel Warhammer Plus right here. Um, probably in the comments below and also in the actual video itself so you can check that out and kind of follow along with the narrative as it has been progressing for the past year and three months or so. Hopefully short and sweet enough to the point uh, to get you the information to vote with your hobby dollars about the stuff that's happening at Games Workshop. Now, this isn't mentioning all the allocations and all the weirdness going on and all the, the bad interactions with local game stores and the things that Games Workshop does. And I think a lot of people know, like opening up a Games Workshop store in a, a town that already has an established store that they have access to the sales records and they know how much business they're doing. That stuff, it's not new. It's been around for years. Everybody talks about it. Everybody just kind of knows it at this point. But I think where the local game stores shine is their service in a lot of cases and their attention to detail. And of course, they're not burdened by cumbersome corporate policies that customers might not 
agree with. But yes, at the end of the day, there's some good and there's definitely some bad with Games Workshop. Their miniatures are still uh, head and shoulders above anything else out on the market as we continue to unbox and build most of their more exciting releases each week here on the channel too and show you other great retailers and other great products that are out there that might enrich and help fulfill your hobby life out there. So I hope that... Um, I hope that this video was very useful to you. I do want to talk about all the um, bad things, the bad timeline of bad behavior that they've done over the past year and a half, because I think a lot of us, we just get so turned off by it that we don't realize all the things in succession that happen, that when you take a look back at a full timeline and realize all these things as they happen together are definitely form a pattern that we've already talked about on this video. Um, that you know maybe maybe you just want to vote with your hobby dollars a little bit better in 2021 there's a lot of external things to the hobby happening out there that are going to make an impact on how much money and how much things we do in the hobby um probably a little bit more for the worse than any of us care but don't let that keep you down there's always something cool to buy and hobby on it's something new and something exciting out there as we always try to cover it here um not necessarily on the YouTube, but definitely more on the site itself. So check it out, spikybits.com. Um, we publish 10 to 15 posts a day. Always try to bring you the freshest content and the most accurate stuff out there. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching our latest video editorial on, uh, well, Games Workshop. <laughs> Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our future videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on just it's totally up to you obviously we want to keep you as happy as possible so check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spiky